Welcome back to Shattering Miss Kirk. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to that first hour, but that, that was a pretty wild ride. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. I, back and forth, but I, I got most of it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have a. Uh, you want to uh, vote on your um, on your position uh, relative to uh, Catlin. Um, Oh, have you seen the? Uh, have you seen the? the uh, you're, as an artist, have you seen the cover shot on Vanity Fair? Yeah, I don't think you can avoid it. I, I, I don't care. Yeah. I, honest to God, I don't yeah. care. I mean, yeah, I'm in the art fine. business. There's you know a lot of strange people in the art business, but so what? I mean, yeah. I, you don't have to. Uh, you have to date them. No, I like to, uh, yeah, yeah, but with, uh, uh, Bruce Jones, there's really nothing to appreciate. Uh, there's nothing redeeming uh, about that story at all. But in, uh, in art, there, are, um, there are a lot of, uh, odd, uh, individuals, uh, men and women, who have real talent. Yeah. Oh, so it's, uh, very common. So we're not, uh, it's, uh, the ad hominem argument, uh, and therefore is, uh, is not what, uh, what prevails. It's, uh, you know, yeah, uh, it's the character. Uh, sometimes, if you if you want to know them personally, that that matters, and it's uh, their ability that matters. If you're um, if you uh, are mm-hmm. dealing with uh, yeah. with them from a professional level. Yep. Yeah. So, so not that interesting to me on what he does. I don't care. Yeah, but I, yeah. I never got into the whole family deal. I mean, I don't I don't like uh, fake a realistic. Television. They pretend like it's real, and most of it's scripted. Don't, you know, there's always a ringer in there that knows what they're going to say and what they want to argue about. I have yeah. never watched even a moment of any episode of uh, whatever the Kardashian TV show is. Um, uh-huh. No, I wouldn't even know the name if it wasn't just so dominant in our society. But yeah. it seems to me that they have absolutely nothing to offer that would entertain anyone. But here I am being uh, pejorative here because uh, uh, out of ignorance, because I have never listened to them, never watched the show. But from what little I, I gather, uh, there should be nothing in their lives that should be a, of interest to anyone. But well, I've seen about 10 minutes of it, and believe me, you're absolutely right. I mean, if you just have nothing on, in your mind to do, and you're just that bored, then it's still not your first choice. Oh, my goodness. Their I mean, family is famous because their daughter had a sex tape. That's it. Oh, is that what it is? No. That's it. That's right. That's right. Oh, so Kim right. Kardashian, the Kardashian family wasn't anything until Kim Kardashian... I had her sex so it sounds like uh, Par- is that that Paris Hilton, the one that uh, uh, rocketed to fame because uh, uh, she had a um, a sex tape that became public. Well, uh, that yeah, that's the same situation. Yeah. Well, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, they're famous just because their parents have money. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that's that's entertainment. What the hey? Yeah, well, their their lives. Wow, you know, there is a uh, there are some lives that I'm fascinated by. Um, mm-hmm. I am fascinated by uh, uh, Doe's life um, from a positive point of view. Not not because he was a good role model, he wasn't, mm-hmm. but because of the fact that uh, that his the content of his character and the intellect he displays in his writing is extraordinary. Mm-hmm. I'm also interested, and in, there are some bad people's lives that I'm interested in. Uh, Paul's. I am fascinated by Paul's life, and it's 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 for the opposite reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul has influenced more people than anyone who has ever lived. Right. And so, knowing the, who he is, what he did, how he uh, wove his uh, wicked web of lies, is uh, is interesting because I know that by exposing it, we can help more people than almost anything else we can do. I took a lot of notes the last since yesterday and last night and this early this morning on uh, some stuff that you were talking about uh, last week. So uh, it's, um, yeah, I, I, it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, I don't understand how this could have gotten this big based on what he said. Yeah, that, yeah. And, uh, I've done a lot of thinking about how in the world could Pauline Christianity have become the most popular religion in uh, the history of the world uh, when you recognize that what Paul said is so obviously false. I mean, just on its face of it, Paul 
constantly, the basis of Pauline doctrine is a refutation of Yahweh's, the, that is the God of the Torah, Prophets, and Psalms, the only God, Yahweh's uh, statements. So Paul contradicted, contravened, demeaned, negated, annulled everything that Yahweh said. Whatever God said was good, Paul said was bad. Whatever God said, this is the means to relationship, uh, Paul said it's the means to slavery. If God said, this is the process that I put in place for salvation, Paul says you, it, uh, that that can't save. So how could somebody whose philosophy is on its face diametrically opposed to the testimony of the God that he claims not only inspired him but authorized him? I have two answers. Okay. Okay, the first, the first one is that uh, Yahweh has never been popular. So the mass, no. mass is a mass of people that have never heard it or are interested right. in hearing it. So um, there's nothing to, mm -hmm. for them to argue about because they don't know what, what the argument is. Uh, so what you're basically is, saying is that, is that the number one reason that Paul has prevailed is, is complete ignorance. And people are, are ignorant because... The Yahweh's testimony, the Torah, Prophets, and Psalms, has never been popular. Right. At no time in human history was it popular in terms of the percentage of people who read it and understood it and accepted it. So Yahweh's testimony has never been popular, and most people have chosen to be wholly and completely ignorant of it. The whole thing. And therefore, they don't know that Paul is contradicting God with his every statement. Is that your position? That, that's, that's my point number one. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, I'm going to challenge point number one in only one okay. regard. Okay. It is true that, that Paul's arguments seem pervasive until such time as you know what God's position is. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is some, if, you, if you're completely unaware of what God said, then you can read Paul and not recognize that everything he's saying is in contradiction to God. That said... If, you're, if you know nothing about what God said, and you are resolutely rational, then Paul implodes on his own merits because of the fact that he claims to be authorized by a God whose statements he is negating. So even if you do not know what, what God said, the very fact that Paul claims to be authorized and inspired by a God that his entire uh, uh, mm -hmm. thrust of his doctrine negate you know but I Paul say you, you know this was what was written but I Paul say you know this could not save this enslaves uh, this uh, uh, this is pornography and I have been authorized by this same God to come up with an entirely new plan mm -hmm. now that on its face even if you didn't know what God said if you're resolutely rational, you have to reject Paul, even if you're completely ignorant of what God said, just on the basis of that premise. Well, you certainly have to uh, study what he said to come to some kind of conclusion, you would think. It should pique your curiosity, but obviously it didn't pique mine as much. I just ignored no. him as a Christian. I yeah. That's uh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, and, that's, and that is what a lot of Christians uh, do, is they, uh, out of... Um, is because he is, it's so obvious that he's contradicting the God that he claims inspired him that they just choose to ignore him rather than deal with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the, uh, what's the second uh, reason that you think that he prevailed? Well, the reason he prevailed is because, as far as I can tell, in his entire presentation is totally synonymous with either Mithraism or, Mithraism or any one of the Babylonian versions of paganism, which was enormously popular. Therefore, they mm -hmm. would readily accept it, even though they didn't accept Paul. They accepted uh, Paul being rehashed by uh, Marcion, you know. But when it got published around and, 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 and money behind it to sell it, then uh, it was sold uh, as, as, um, as something that was very familiar. And as you always yeah. say, familiarity sells. So they, sells. they put the bit in the teeth and ran with it. So Yeah, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. The, uh, uh, what Paul promoted was Gnosticism. Gnosticism is the, uh, is the uh, Greek 
religious philosophy that things of the spirit are good and that things of the flesh, things uh, that are, are material, are a, an evil and flawed representation, a shadow of the perfect. And so all of Paul's letters and his, uh, his diatribe against the flesh and in favor of the spirit uh, are all based on Gnosticism. Uh-huh. And in Gnosticism, since it's a philosophical approach to life and to religion and to the world, uh, you also have to look at the, the gods of the Greeks. The gods had a, the Greeks had a god that was uh, perfect as a counterfeit. It's Dionysus. Mm-hmm. Dionysus' father was the father of the gods, so he would refer to Zeus as the father. Uh, Dionysus was born on the winter uh, solstice, December 25th, uh, uh, in uh, uh, back at the uh, at that time, uh, and so became the basis of Christmas. Uh, Dionysus was uh, killed and resurrected uh, at the uh, uh, vernal equinox. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At, in fact, Dionysus had a holy week that was uh, a direct um, uh, had a direct connection to the Babylonian uh, holy week associated with with Istar, which we get Easter. And the Holy Week, uh, in every way, mirrors the Christian celebration of Easter. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Dionysus had a, uh, a cult uh, of, uh, that uh, had religious ad- adherence. For example, the most evil man, I think, the most religious, most evil military and political leader in human history would be Hadrian. Hadrian fell in love with the Dionysus cult and became one of the uh, de facto leaders of the Dionysus cult. And so here you have the Greek philosophy and Greek religion merged in Gnosticism and Dionysus and the Christianity that Marcion, who was a Gnostic, promoted is uh, the very religion that Paul and the Greeks all agreed upon. Mm-hmm. Dionysus merged with Gnosticism. So, and, and the power of the Roman leader. army to, to implement it. You bet. I was pondering these two questions. So, this is really one question, but the various answers that you have provided. Mm-hmm. Is how was it possible that just today there's 2,500,000,000 Christians, and there have probably been, oh, five or six billion Christians over the past 2,000 years? How is it possible? that something as obviously false, Pauline Christianity, could have become the most popular religion in the world when it is so clearly untrue. And uh, I think you've, uh, you've hit uh, all three um, uh, of the reasons uh, squarely on that. It required complete ignorance. Now, the proof we have for that is during... Paul's life. When you read Paul's letters, is uh, is uh, Paul uh, writing letters of you know everybody that I've talked to you all uh, believe me I'm just so thrilled that you've all accepted what I uh, what I had to offer, or is he writing letters of I'm condemning Yosha's disciples? They're they're presumed to have authority, but they have no authority. I am the only one that has been picked by God to be the sole. Uh, apostle to the uh, the Gentile world, and is he writing those that he has spoken to and said, "What's the matter with you, morons? How could you so quickly abandon what I I told you? Which which do we find in Paul's letters? So it's always the uh, the letter. I mean, he just uh, always. Yeah, everybody's abandoned. He's on the warpath. Yeah. yeah, everybody. In fact, his final letter to Timothy he says, "The entire world has abandoned me. You are my only loyal friend." Everyone else has rejected me. So during his life, where he was, uh, where people who knew Yosha and the disciples who were known by uh, by many, and where he was talking to people who still loved and knew the Torah, mm-hmm. that during his life his message was summarily rejected by people who knew better. 
If you know the Torah, you will immediately reject Paul. There is no way to know the Torah and accept Paul. And so, those who knew better, who were not ignorant, rejected him without exception. He was wholly and completely rejected during his life. It wasn't until Marcion, uh, a wealthy uh, political and religious advocate, created a, a codex that had nothing but Paul's letters plus Acts and Luke. Uh -huh. It was Paul's attache. And that created this religion based upon those letters and and made hundreds upon hundreds of copies and circulated them with, with considerable wealth behind it as a cause. It wasn't until that happened that people embraced it, and the people that embraced it were embracing it out of complete and total ignorance. Uh -huh. Because it appeals to them, because it was their religion. Yep. Just a new version or a new tw a new twist, but uh, definitely yeah, not even much of a new twist. It was almost universally their religion, just with uh, they just renamed uh, Dionysus Jesus. They re renamed uh, Yahweh the Father Zeus. I mean, uh, it's um, it's it's the same religion, just with different nomenclature. Yeah, and that's basically what uh, spread it, uh, Catholicism across South America. You just uh, take whatever they got and uh, weave it back in. Yes. So it's basically the same, too. So, uh, yeah, throughout, uh, throughout the history of Roman Catholicism, they have universally adopted whatever the, uh, the pagan community uh, I held as, uh, as part of their religious beliefs, and they've just incorporated that into to Christianity so as to make Christianity more popular. Uh, remember the, the thing that you, uh, I think you, a couple of years ago, you reported, <coughs> reported that Pope that retired, he uh, came over and he blessed a little statue in Cuba or someplace mm -hmm. down in the Bahamas. Yeah, 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 whatever. Exactly. If you like yeah, it, whatever. you can keep it. You can keep it. Yeah, all we want is your money. And your allegiance to uh, to us, so uh, we will we will accept whatever you accept to make it easier for you to uh, to pay us and uh, to let us control you. Now the, the the crime syndicate though that is the Catholic Church. I'm taking you my cue mm -hmm. from you and I, my cue from you and IQ. Uh, yes. You know that cannot be spread without some military backing, and of course it wasn't throughout Europe. Uh, it required armies and kings who would go along with the other power. You know to okay. support one another. So you once again you cannot do this without uh, some force of hand. You know. So no, the, the, I, the third, I, I the third, the third wheel, the third spoke in the wheel. You know, this is how you spread it. That was the uh, the third point that you made. Mm -hmm. Is that the first point was that originally uh, that it, it succeeds because it was uh, uh, because of ignorance. It grew out of ignorance, uh, and that it grew because uh, it gave them what they were already accustomed to, familiarity cells. But the third point is, it was then imposed by force. Mm -hmm. Theodosius, uh, who is really more important than, uh, than uh, anyone in the history of Christianity, imposed it by force. So, Kirk, it really is just a matter of uh, those three things. I think so. Of, uh, when people were aware of what the Torah said, when Paul was speaking to an audience that knew Yosha, mm -hmm. knew people who had, uh, had witnessed Yosha's uh, words and deeds, who uh, knew the disciples, had listened to uh, Yosha's disciples, they universally rejected mm -hmm. Pauline doctrine. I mean, it, there wasn't a single Christian in the world at that time, 100% rejected Paul and his, uh, and his diatribe. According to Paul. According, According to, Paul. to every, every word that oozes out of his letters, he was summarily rejected by those who knew better. Mm -hmm. But to time... Changed, times changed, and ultimately Marcion uh, arrived, and he uh, publicized Paul's letters uh, to an ignorant world. And they found great harmony with Paul's letters because he was pr promoting the same religion that, that they had already accepted. Mm -hmm. Even the Romans, it's the same religion. You know, Dionysus simply became Bacchus. But Bacchus and Dionysus are the same, uh, exactly the same manifestation of, uh, of the Son of the Sun. Persia has no trouble, trouble with this religion. 
Right. In Egypt, they accepted it because in, in Egypt, it's uh, it's uh, Osiris. Mm-hmm. And in uh, the Babylonian religion, it was Tammuz. Mm-hmm. And so there was uh, universal uh, acceptance uh, b- b- by those people who were ignorant of what Yosha said. And uh, just as Christians do, you, if you're going to be a Christian, you either have to completely disavow everything Paul wrote and throw out half the Christian New Testament, or you have to disavow everything that Yosha said. Mm-hmm. And throw out, you know, the whole of Matanya and Yahu Kanan, Matthew and, uh, and John, and Revelation, for that matter. And those are your choices. You can have one or the other. You just can't have both. Yeah. Uh, so what happened ultimately then is then you had the power of uh, of the uh, of the sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, Constantine simply. Uh, made Christianity uh, equally acceptable to Mithraism because they were essentially the same. He didn't make Christianity the official religion of the state as is claimed. That was not true. And he was a scumbag. But what happened is uh, about 75 years after uh, Constantine, Theodosius, he's the one that made Christianity in 400 uh, CE the official religion of Rome, for which there would be no exceptions. And it wasn't just Christianity. It was Pauline Christianity, as endorsed by those who were opposed to uh, to um, uh, the, the um, fundamental concept uh, that uh, Yosha was uh, a diminished manifestation of God. The, uh, um, uh, he went to war, uh, Theodosius did, with all dissenting views other than the Nicene acceptance of, uh, of their God uh, being the totality of God so that they w- would be able to completely eliminate any of the testimony of the prior now deceased God. That you know, shown his dad in Romans. Right, and that sends what's his name, uh, Arian or something off to Arian. Off, yeah, yeah, Arian heads off to Africa to hide out because he, they don't kill him. Right, he refused. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, uh, then he okay. imposed it. He created the serf lord mm-hmm. economic system and the Roman Catholic. Uh, clerical system mm-hmm. that had to be uh, obeyed or you were going to be killed. You'd be tortured. Uh, there would be no exceptions. It wasn't that just Christianity was the official religion. There'd be no other religions to be tolerated. Okay, let me ask you a question, now, because this is begging a question. Mm-hmm. If, if Yahweh is, is Lord, is a Lord, and if he if his word enslaves, as Paul has been talking for hours and hours and hours uh, in these mm-hmm. letters, uh, then how come the world's not a bunch of Israelites? Yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, he certainly had the power because Paul said he struck him blind on the road to Damascus. So, I mean, they right. like the guys without, without means. He don't even right. need an army. He just, you know, knock you down. So, right. if that's true, and if he is a Lord, if you believe he's a Lord, then right. the Lord's Lord. They don't, they don't, uh, ask the Lord you, of would, you mind, would you mind come over and do something for me? No, he don't, he doesn't say, that's not a Lord. No. And it certainly is not a fault. And, and if there's enslavement involved, then we'd be all marching to the same thing. Yeah. Can, can I ask you if uh, sure. if he had to strike Paul uh, blind, mm-hmm. and he and he hit him so hard and so frequently, abused Paul so hard and so frequently that uh, Paul required thought he was going to die and required required many many days just to recuperate from the experience. Yeah. Why did he? Why did he ask Moshe to go with him? Oh, why did he? Why ask? was his experience with Moshe so different that he said, "You know, I'd, I'd like you to do this." That Moshe said, "No, I don't think I'm qualified." He said, "I really would like you to do this." Uh, you know, well, what's your uh, what's your uh, objection? Well, I don't speak well. Well, I'll, what if I'll help uh, you I out. have your? Yeah, I have. I'll help you out. What if I have your brother? You know, yeah. join us. He he speaks really well. Uh, would that be okay? Yeah. So here's Yahweh making compromises with yeah. and requesting very politely in a non-forceful way Moshe, uh, you know, an 80-year-old codger, 
to uh, to go do this with him. Mm-hmm. He's always asking. He's, he's never. Right. He's, he's always presenting this case. Follow me. Right. Follow me, Abraham. Follow me, uh, disciples. Right. You know when he uh, when he came when he came to his disciples. Oh, why don't we hear that uh, for uh, for Yahu Kanan and Shimon Kefesh to uh, to join him? Why don't we hear him saying that that he struck them blind and then beat the living crap out of them, and then after they begged for mercy, he says, "All right, all right. So now you you uh, you're going to do this, right? You know, why did he simply just ask them? Mm-hmm. Follow me. He must have lost his touch." He must have lost his touch. <laughs> Listen, you can't, you can't have it. You can't, you can't live on both sides of the streets like Paul does. Right. You know, I would tell you today. Uh, you know, I just came back from a, a trip to Ohio, and uh, Ohio is. Uh, you know, Mark Twain once said, "You know, I want to die in Ohio because it'll be 20 years before anybody knows about it." That's how far <laughs> Cincinnati is behind the rest of the country. Yeah, you know, I get 20 more years because no one will hear about it. Uh, and, and I mention that because in Ohio, there are mega churches uh, on uh, on every other corner, and the presence of Roman Catholicism there is just it just makes you want to puke. That's my nose. Oh God! It is so far behind the rest of the country that's come to realize, you know, that Christianity is a crock, and and so, you know, if you, it's like Texas, they don't ask you uh, uh, if you're a Christian; they ask you what oh, church no, you go to. Yeah, where do you go to? Where do you go to church? Where do you, yeah, where you go to church? Yeah, well, yeah, because it's just assumed. Well, the only question that would be assumed in uh, in uh, Cincinnati area of Ohio would be, you know, are you part of a, you know, one of these mega churches, or are you uh, Catholic, uh-huh. with the majority being Catholic? And uh, to to stand out and say, you know, no, I'm not only not religious, I'm anti-religious. In a community like that, I mean, you will be ostracized. It will be very difficult. If you were to try to do business, you'd be blackballed. You'd have no chance. Can you imagine me as an artist in Italy? I'm, <laughs> as pretty as it is, I mean, what, you know, I, what, you you got domo after domo. You can't. You, everything is saint so and so. You can't even paint paint a landscape without a statue of somebody in it. And just right. you break. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. So it is. It's always been hard to rebel, and uh, like an American, I, there there is zero chance that the Obaminator is a Christian. None. And and yet he claims that he's a Christian because if he's not a Christian, he couldn't win the election. Uh, George W. Bush, once he won his second term, he announced that he wasn't a Christian, that his uh, his uh, his God had nothing in common with Christianity, but he had um, he had only feigned an association because he needed the evangelical vote. Uh, so, you know, we have created a a scenario. Where it is, um, it is extraordinarily difficult to walk against the crowd, and that's really why I've enjoyed on our Shabbat programs on Blog Talk Radio and the Yadi Radio. Why I've enjoyed focusing on the life and words of Dode, who is better known as uh, David, because of the fact that he bowed his back against them, he exposed and condemned them, he called those who were the enemies of Yahweh his enemies, and you know. Boy, if you're going to do that, you're going to take a beating. And he did. You know, Tara and I uh, were, I know personally, I was overwhelmed by the, just not overwhelmed, but just amazed by the 23rd Psalm. And and we were talking over the weekend about uh, our past when we, uh, when we were Christians and how we viewed God. And this just ain't the God uh, exposed there. It's not the God that we, the Christianity, that we knew as Christians. I mean, uh, Terry used to say, I'm going to go in kind of like behind a, a cardboard Jesus so he doesn't mm-hmm. see me, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to sneak in the back door just hoping I can get in. Uh. You know, honest to goodness, and it's like how how absurd our, our whatever, all the teaching we learn to come up with those type of, and still have those ideas harbored in our brain. Uh, man, that's... Uh, 
and then you read the 23rd Psalm, and, and I'm, I was just totally moved. I mean, that's yeah, is how that's different the the relationship was and mm-hmm. the expectation was of Dode from that presented by uh, by Christians. His relationship with Yahweh and, and the things that he expected to do with Yahweh so radically different it, it, but yet it is exactly what we have from other places come to expect that you know we'll we'll be out exploring the universe with him and then come back you know every seventh day to uh, to share yeah. what we have seen what we have done can, can you imagine y'all were just coming up and say hey y'all can i come with you yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he'd probably say y'all, too. Uh, yeah, I think so. And, and the idea well, that not only will he say, I want to come with you, you know, I... He, I show you some he, cool stuff. Well, it's not just that he wants to show us the cool stuff. That's what I always expected. Yeah, he wants and, to. And that'll be, but he also wants to see and experience what it's going to be like being with us. Yeah. As we explore and uh, and and try things out, and it's just like a a father witnessing their son do something that they love, and having more fun doing that than actually showing them. We'll be back when we have a caller. Welcome back to Shattering Mist. Uh, Kirk, there's another thing that um, strikes me, mm-hmm. and that is that not only is is Paul aggressively opposed to the disciples, condemning them. Mm-hmm. Not only is Paul, and, and those are the people that we know were chosen by Yahshua, mm-hmm. not only is, uh, is Paul the meaning of Yahweh's Torah, Prophets, and Psalms, but he is internally contradictory. Contradicts himself, and he says so many things that are just so, I mean, like, whoa, where did that come from? Like, for example, when he says that he was all things to all people, to those who were Torah observant, he pretended to be Torah observant even though he wasn't. To those who weren't Torah observant, he says, no, I didn't keep the Torah. For those that were Jewish, I pretended to be Jewish. For those who weren't Jewish, I pretended to be Gentile. I was all things to all people so that I could gain uh, an advantage over them. Now, the moment you hear that, why would you trust such an individual? That's that's Machiavellian. You know, I, I'm going to be whatever I need to be to uh, win your confidence. Isn't that him admitting that he was the sheep of the wolf in sheep's clothing, that he pretended to be what he was not? Did, did anyone ever change their uh, story, the, any, any of the witnesses, right. the disciples? Did any of them change their story like that? Did they ever act any different among uh, Gentiles? No. And, and Trying to be something that they weren't? No. Mm-hmm. No, and here's Yosha warning us about the, uh, the the wolf in sheep's clothing, and here's Paul saying, yep, that's me. Yeah. I will but pretend to be that which I am not to gain an advantage over you. Or in Second Corinthians where he says that uh, I'm demon-possessed, that it's a, a messenger of Satan that is the thorn in my side, that is the goat in my side that controls me. I mean, when you read something like that, how in the world as a Christian do you say, oh, yeah, that's, that's just fine. I don't have a problem with him being demon-possessed. I don't have any problem with him uh, falsifying his identity. I don't have any problem with that. Uh, you know, when he says hundreds of times over, but I, Paul, say, why would we give a crap as to what but Paul, but what I, Paul, say? I mean, why would any, if you can read uh, uh, thousands of pages of material that's, Yahweh says, and he happens to be God, why would you even give two hoots what but I, Paul, say? Did, did you, when you're reading Yahweh Kanan or Shimon Kefesh's testimony, or you're reading, you know, who cares what uh, that uh, Yosha fellow says, but I, you know, Peter or John say? Mm-hmm. Well, if, you follow, if you followed it up with, if I say because Yosha said, you know, or I say because in the Torah and, and Yahshua Yah, it says yeah. that's a whole another ball game. But he never right. he never clarifies anything based on anything, but right. but his whatever he come up with in his little pea brain. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the things that really uh, struck me is that that is constantly warning us about a uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's constantly warning us uh, in the Revelation about a uh, a false. Uh, apostle, someone who will make a false claim of apostleship uh, right there in Ephesus. 
that will be uh, will take them away from their first love, which was the the message that uh, Yao Kanan uh, had shared with them. And then you have all of Paul's letters in opposition to Yao Kanan and and uh, in opposition to what Yosha said right there in Ephesus. And the, the people don't make the connection. Mm-hmm. You know, Paul claims he was the Benjamite, which is the wolf in the uh, the Torah. And that uh, he admits that he changes his appearance to achieve an advantage. And Yosha said, beware of the wolf in sheep's clothing, because he will lead you away from the Torah. Yeah. And people don't make the connection. But an advantage to do what? I mean, if... Yeah. Remember, uh, yeah, in uh, in the Sermon on the Mount... When uh, Yosha says, do not think for a moment that I came to annul the Torah, but instead to fulfill it, not a single stroke or a single letter in the Torah will be done away with until uh, while the heavens and earth exist. And then he, uh, he says, anyone who would tell you otherwise will be called little and lowly in the kingdom of heaven. What does Paulus mean in Latin? Uh, I looked it up, believe it or not, I looked it up yesterday in two lexicons, and it still comes up little. Little and lowly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's Yosha saying, that's going to be the name of the person that does this. When Yosha said, I come in my father's name as Yosha, and you don't accept me, but one will come in his own name, and him you will accept. Well, who came in their own name, a name that they themselves chose, that is accepted by more people than anyone in human history? Uh Uh-huh. The same guy. I mean, how much more blunt could Yahweh be about it than Yosha? Guess, guess whose name is next to Satan's in the uh, in the uh, Hebrew uh, Greek dictionary? <laughs> Shaul. Shaul. It's also the same word as Sheol, which is Sheol. <laughs> the realm credit for Satan. Uh-huh. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Greg.